Okay, just because I know you can't hear me. What I got here is a nice little cheap push stick that I've made that works real well for me. You can see what it is. Works great. Um, the reason now we're trying to cut these down the middle. And the reason I ran both pieces through is because it's never exactly in the middle. So in order to keep things symmetrical, you want to run it, cut it in half. Then you want to run the cutoff section through so we know they're the exact same distance. All right, here we go again. <laughs> step we're going to go ahead and set these up and we're going to pre-drill them so when we have our panels built they'll be ready to go okay play along you'll see in a minute what we're talking about and I have two different drill sizes here you know that the head of your screw is bigger than the screw itself. And what I want to do here is countersink these screws. So here's what I'm going to do. Pre-drill through with the small drill. Go in the right direction. May as well just them all. I like to do about three or four in here. And I don't like to have them in exactly the same spots in the middle. This will all come to fruition when we get there. Now I know these aren't cut to exact size already, so what I'm doing is uh, you know, allowing on both ends. And what I've got here is a marker on my grill. Just a piece of tape. This doesn't have to be exactly perfect because all we're doing is making a little notch. Now you can go buy a countersink tool if you want, but I'm one of those like the frugal gourmet guy. Right? All of these aren't exactly the same, that's fine. Because all we're going to do here when we're done, and this is all screwed together, our final step is to glue a dowel rod in over the top of this. Because let's face it, nobody wants to look at the screws. All right, that one's ready to go. Again, no place in particular. I know these aren't cut the size already. I have to switch to my left hand here. I can't feel my right hand. Look, that one's not even exactly in the center. What do you think of a guy who calls out his own mistakes? Wow. Crazy thought. I don't like that one.
I'm not going to countersink the one I didn't like. Oh no, it made a mistake. What do I do? You want to make sure that the drill bit that you use for this, two things. You want to make sure it's the size that you can buy dowel rod, so don't just grab any drill. And the other thing you want to do is make sure that the screw head fits down in it easily. You can see that screw is now countersunk. I like to pre-drill these and I like to leave, I don't want, the, I want to pre-drill the first hole, it doesn't have to be tight. Um, as long as it's pre-drilled, it'll keep the, the first hole basically we're pre-drilling so the wind don't split. The second hole we're drilling the sink the, uh, the sink head. So now that I beat that topic to nauseam, let's go. Didn't know you could use a, a uh, table cloth or drill press, did you? Once all this, what I call grunt work is done, the actual assembly goes pretty quickly. If you don't do this, I promise the wood will split. Now a lot of people just glue this and use uh, the pin nailing, and that's fine. You can do it that way, but I find that I don't like to do things the first time, so I definitely don't want to redo them. So what I figure is that I'll go ahead and screw them and glue them, and you know sometimes you can put a you can put a brad nail in it to hold it in place if you want to, but it all just depends on how warped the door panels are. Still with me? Now you note how I line that drill up with the hole in my table saw so I'm not dulling my drill bit. It's not that I haven't done it before, or I won't do it again. You can see there's a big chunk right here in the table saw missing from when I was a little overzealous with my circular saw. And finally, least but not last, this is just insurance that these styles won't split on you is really all it is. I guess the correct terminology is not style. But that's the, what we're going to go with because it's basically the same thing. Try to use the right terminology so when you go and ask a question at your local Walmart, I'm sorry, your local Menards, they have some clue as to what you're trying to express to them. Ooh, my hand hurts. Last one. Thank you, Lord. That's done. These are all ready to go. Now on to making the door. Boom, the most boring video you've ever watched. All right. Now, I'm going to take this off and we're going to do some freehanding. Did we do any freehanding? Also be way on the table. So here's our panel. I did a little prelude to this um, already this morning, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a second. Well, we're just going to build one set of doors. We're not going to build the doors for the entire uh, camper because I just want to show you the process, at least the way I do it. 
You can variate from that. You can make different types of doors, whatever you want to do, a raised panel. But I try to, in these campers, I want to try to keep the doors simple and I want to make sure they're solid because if the door works its way open and then it's bouncing around, or even if it doesn't work its way open and it's bouncing around, they tend to come apart. So these panels are pine and they're glued, already glued, clamped, and uh, they've ran them through a planer, a big planer. Now this finish is not ready, complete and ready to go. I like to take, it, it'll have to be belt sanded again is what I'm getting at. Um, I like to take a look at the knots in my wood and find my square that I just had in my hand. Put it someplace so it'll be convenient. All right. My overall on these doors, I'm going to re-verify my dimensions. We'll be, they'll be 11 and a half by 16 and a half. Right on. So my goal. Oh, good shot. I'm going to write that down because I know 11 and a half by 16 and a half. Kevin, don't turn your back to the camera. What kind of a guy are you? All right. I don't know if this is square or not. I'm only working off of this plane. I'm also taking a look at the knots. This panel is 24 inches wide. So I don't like this knot here. I'm cutting him out. He didn't really do anything to me, but I just don't like it. All right. Now, my 11 and a half will be minus the thickness of this. So, I don't want to cut this at 11 and a half. I want to cut this here. I'm just showing you the easy way to do this. You can do whatever you want. And then I will go, you can do this mathematically, but guess what? I'm lazy. And I just want to show you the process right there. So, that's 11 and a half. Minus the two. Don't do it. I'm really having quite the day. When you do these, a couple of things you want to look at. Which way is the grain running? Okay. Is the grain running the way you want it to run? Because you don't want to have one door with the grain running one way and the other door with the grain, you know, they look kind of hokey. Unless you're going to paint it and it doesn't matter. Now, I'm not really crazy about this knot. Play on words. This is my overall cut. I find it easier to work with small with uh, smaller pieces to do my final cuts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overcut this. I'm going to overcut this right here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this end. I'm going to overcut it. And then, okay, so this line and this line I will cut off with the table saw freestyle. I'll take the calculation off of this line. Let's call that three quarters of an inch. And I'll set my blade to take out three quarters of an inch so I come with a nice square edge. Copy that. Cool. All right. Now, I don't like this knot and I don't like that. So now I'm squaring off of my line, not off of the edge of the panel. I can stop in the middle of a panel. See, I don't like that knot. Let's move back a little bit. Hope you guys are getting this up above. I hope trying to set this up so it makes sense. And there, and I already know that I want this to be 17 inches. Now I know I have to make two doors this size. So what I will do, first off, is cut this off here, and then I'll lay this in a position where I can see what I like about the knots. It looks like it's going to be like in here, between here. In there and you see how and then I can move this to my 17 and a half will be oh yeah see that takes all of this out all of this out and that that's the plan let's do it these babies will whip out of here so be careful
to do is take a look at this wood, and I'm okay all the way through here. And this is rough cut. Now, I don't have to lay the bottom one out because I already know. I already know what this is going to be when it's finished. I'll just run this bottom piece through the same process. That's going to be there. Let's see what's. In there. I don't know if I'm going to have enough. I'm going to end up with that knot and that knot. I'm going to go that way. Let's go all the way over to there. Actually, we can go to there. Yeah, that'll work. All right. So, more rough cutting. So, we're going to go with here. 